When I say the word turkey, what do you think of? Probably a big bird that people eat while arguing with their family about whether or not gender's a spectrum, right? Yeah? <laughs> well, the country of Turkey knows that's what you think about when you hear their name, and they're sick of that shit. <laughs> The country of Turkey is ready to change its name. Officials have notified the United Nations, asking that the country be referred to as Turkey, the way it's spelled and pronounced in Turkish. It's a way to disassociate its name from the bird and negative connotations that sometimes come with it. The official request follows the release of an ad campaign promoting the new name. Hey, Mom, I just landed. Oh, hello, Turkey. <laughs> hello, Turkey. Hello, Turkey. Hello, Turkey, yay! Hey! Turkey, yay! I like this, I like this. And I, I'm willing, I'm willing to start saying Turkey, yay. I don't mind, but I refuse to use those little dots over the U, all right? <laughs> and this has nothing to do with Turkey and everything to do with drawing a line for how many keyboards I'm willing to have on my phone. <laughs> I'm already three keyboards deep. I've got emoji keyboards, I've got my GIF keyboard, then my symbols keyboard, then a secret symbols keyboard behind that keyboard, and I've got to add another keyboard so I can type a U with the dots that make it look like it's staring at me. It's too much! <laughs> it's too much, Turkey A. <laughs> and I know what some of you are saying right now. You're like, oh, Trevor, you don't need another keyboard. You can just hold down the U key. Yeah, but it's about the extra effort. <laughs> if you use your thumbs too much, they're gonna bulk up. I'm trying to get mine long and slender for the summer, baby. <laughs> That's right. So I'll say Turkey A, but you gotta help me help you, and not the you with the dots, Turkey A, all right? Because <laughs> no, I, I get why Turkey's doing this. I get it. A country's name is its brand. Nobody wants their brand associated with an animal that people don't even like that much. I mean, if you're gonna get mistaken for a bird, at least let it be a bird with some flavor, some juice, you know? Like if their country was named Spicy Chicken Sandwich, <laughs> they wouldn't be changing anything. I will say, Turkey should just know this, though. Just because they got the UN to agree on this doesn't mean that people are actually gonna start calling them Turkey A. It's not that easy. Trust me, I know this. Back in middle school, I tried to get everyone to call me Travolva. <laughs> yeah, and they just laughed like you guys did now. <laughs> they said it was a stupid name, which I guess in retrospect it kind of was, you know? Unless you guys like it, no? Okay, you're fine. Travolva, <laughs> Travolva no is stupid, forget it. Let's move on. Wait, did someone say it was cool? cool? No, okay. Anyway. <laughs> I just thought I heard someone say it, it is a cool... Because it could... No? All right, still no. All right. <laughs> I actually think this is a good idea. You know what? A lot of countries should be updating their names. Yeah. They can just update it to, to make it modern. You're like, this isn't the United States of America. Let's be honest. It's more like the states that barely put up with each other of America. <laughs> yeah? Every country. Like, Greece makes it sound messy, but it's not. <laughs> Hungary. What if they've eaten? Huh? <laughs> Yeah, Niger. Well, you need to change that name to be safe. <laughs> you just need to change that name to be safe. I bet you right now, they're losing a ton of white people tourism. Because <laughs> there's a lot of white people who are too nervous to type that into Expedia. <laughs> it's just like, I'm heading to N-I-G. You know what, I'm just going to Paris. I'm just going to go to Paris. <laughs> I'm just going to Paris. I don't want any trouble here. I'm just going to Paris. But let's move on to some other international news. Because while Turkey is changing its name, Russia has spent the past three months trying to change Ukraine's name to Russia Junior. But Ukraine isn't the only country suffering from Russia's invasion. Yeah, what many people might not know is that Ukraine is one of the world's top producers of grain. But as part of its invasion, Russia is blocking Ukraine's ports and intercepting the grain. So now the world is facing a grain shortage, which Russia is taking advantage of. The U.S. has given out about 14 countries a heads up about stolen Ukrainian grain. U.S. officials say that Russia stole grain from Ukraine and alerted these other countries, mainly in Africa, that Russia will probably sell it. Policy experts say faced with starvation, most countries in the area likely won't hesitate to buy from Russia. The director of one African think tank told The New York Times, quote, this is not a dilemma. Africans don't care where they get their food from. And if someone is going to moralize about that, they are mistaken. Okay, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. I get what you're saying, but Africans don't care where they get their food from. Come on, don't put it like that. <laughs> yes, some parts of Africa are suffering from famine and their leaders can't afford to take the moral high ground because they need the food. But not just Africans don't care where they get their food from. It makes it sound like us Africans were just running around on the sidewalk grabbing people's brunches out of their plates. <laughs> Just like, ha-ha, 
You did not get your brioche. It's mine now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, just in case you're wondering, Africans are gonna use the grain to make, like, bread and shit, okay? These stories always make it sound like Africans are just gonna eat the grain right out of the sack. <laughs> make it sound like that with us. It's just like, ah, oh, we love this. Ah, oh, put that grain in my mouth, huh? Ah. Oh. I know that's what you guys were picturing in your heads. I know it. <laughs> I said, we need grain, and you guys were like, I guess they eat grain, I guess that's what they do. <laughs> we cook. <laughs> the situation is really messed up. Not only is Russia stealing Ukraine's grain, they're causing a food shortage in the rest of the world, and then they're gonna sell the grain to make up for the shortage that they're causing. And can we just take a moment to acknowledge how humiliating this is for Russia? Huh? When they started this invasion, Putin was like, our glorious army will conquer Ukraine for new Russian empire. And now he's just like, okay, plan B, let's just rob this bitch, okay? We just go to steal. <laughs> we just go to steal now. <laughs> plan B. <laughs> yeah, you went from being all high and mighty, and now the dude's basically on the corner in Africa, like, you, got, you want grain? I got grain. You want grain? <laughs> I got grain. I also got the Rolex. I got the Rolex. Just the good stuff. Just the good stuff. You want grain? I got grain. <laughs> but let's move on from the war in Ukraine to the war zone that is America. Ever since the Uvalde school shooting, Congress has been working hard to craft sensible gun safety measures that can be narrowly defeated at the last minute. But a lot of people are trying to make this time different. I mean, just today, Matthew McConaughey, who's from Uvalde, was at the White House pushing for reforms. Unfortunately, though, nobody really expects a lot to change. Now, that's where there is an upside to living in the states that barely put up with each other of America. Right? And that is, individual states can break off and pass their own gun laws, which is exactly what's happening right here in New York. New York bolstered its already tough gun laws, some of the strictest in the nation. Governor Hochul signed a package of gun reform bills yesterday. Now, among them, a measure that bans the sale of semi-automatic rifles to anybody under 21. New buyers are also required to obtain a permit. Also, red flag laws are expanding. Body armor for civilians is outlawed, and ammo for semi-automatic handguns is required to be micro-stamped to make it easier to trace. Hochul celebrated the new laws in the Bronx. It just keeps happening. Shots ring out, flags come down, and nothing ever changes, except here in New York. Wow. <laughs> wow. This is... This is so weird. A mass shooting happened, and then politicians did something. <laughs> I didn't even know that that was possible. <laughs> yeah, it's like I showed up to McDonald's and the McFlurry machine is working. It's just... <laughs> I don't even know how to react to this. Do, do I clap? Am I supposed to tip? What's a good tip for passing gun law? 10%? I'm sure it's 10%. <laughs> You know what this feels like? This feels like when you're ready to argue with your partner and before you can say anything, they just apologize, right? <laughs> yeah, now you've got a throat full of screams and nothing to do with it. <laughs> it's like, thank you, I appreciate your apology, I love you too. <laughs> and New York made a lot of changes. For instance, it's raising the minimum age on semi-automatic rifles, which seems like common sense to me, you know? Although, in my opinion, instead of 21, I feel like it should be 21 and four days. Yeah, because I don't want someone buying a gun on the same night that they're slamming 10 shots of Jaeger. Just spread it out, <laughs> you know? New York is also gonna be banning body armor, and that makes sense. Right. In fact, this is the first state in the country to do it, which is a great idea. In fact, they should also ban Under Armour while they're at it. <laughs> yeah, it's not about the shootings. I'm just tired of seeing people's nipples on the train, you know? <laughs> I get it, you work out. <laughs> oh, and I know. I know some people are saying, but wait, I'm not a shooter. I just want body armor for my protection. Don't worry. You don't need body armor, right? If you're not doing anything nefarious, you don't need body armor. Yeah. <laughs> if there's something I've learned from American movies, it's that you just need to keep a precious family heirloom on your body. That stops any bullets. <laughs> any time. It's like, bah, ah, oh, thank God. My mom's Bible stopped the bullets. <laughs> okay. Bah, whoa. Oh. Oh, thank goodness, my grandpa's pocket watch saved me. <laughs> bah, oh, thank God I carry grandma's cherished dildo with me all the time. <laughs> saved my life once again. Thank you, grandma. <laughs> thank you so much. 
I'm just gonna let that soak in for a second. <laughs> All right, finally, let's move on to a story about CNN, which stands for Cable News Ninjas. Anyway, <laughs> for years, CNN has been notorious for overhyping every story, like it's, you know, the zombie apocalypse. It's like, breaking news, the midterm elections are now six months away. <laughs> And not surprisingly, this approach has started to backfire as viewers have learned to tune it out, you know, like the boy who cried wolf, or in this case, the wolf who cried wolf. So, because of that, <laughs> because of that, CNN is making a big change. We start here with breaking news about breaking news involving CNN. The network has a new boss, and he says CNN is now cutting back on overhyping everything as, quote, breaking news. So much so that CNN has actually added a breaking news guideline to its style book. So you'll soon see a lot less of that breaking news banner at the bottom of the TV screen. Yes, CNN is cutting back on the overuse of breaking news. And to celebrate, it immediately put up a countdown clock to the moment when it'll officially reduce the amount of breaking news. <laughs> Very exciting. One thing at a time. Look, look, people, the truth is, the truth is, most stories aren't giant news in that way. I'm glad they're doing this, you know? Great job, Chris Lick. There's only been, like, three breaking news stories of the past two decades, let's be honest. Like, 9-11, coronavirus, and that time that guy put salt on his food, but from up here. <laughs> yeah, most people put the salt from, like, down here, but he did it from up here, yo. That dude changed the game. It's a technique, it's a whole thing. And now that CNN is acknowledging this, now that they're acknowledging that not everything is breaking news, maybe, just maybe, all of cable news can acknowledge that maybe news doesn't need to be 24 hours. Maybe, huh? It's not necessary. You know, maybe you, you can wait to get all the facts and tell us the correct story at the end of the day. <laughs> J just me? <laughs> Possibly. I mean, think about it, think about it. Think about it, honestly. The first 10 hours of any news story on cable news is just speculation. Breaking news, we're hearing that a tiger has escaped from the zoo and mauled 10 people. It is a sad day. Hold on, hold on. Slight clarification. We're now hearing that the tiger was in the mall and the mall has 10 people. <laughs> Everybody is alive, and oh, hold on, our, our sources on the ground are telling us it's not a tiger, it's a panda <laughs> express. <laughs> there is a panda express in the mall. <laughs> We're gonna stay on top of this story for the next 24 hours. <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> Here's the thing, even when there is news, most of it isn't that exciting, right? It's just everyday stuff that's boring but important. The economy is up, the economy is down. The government is doing something, or more likely not doing something, you know? <laughs> so this is good. And to lower expectations, CNN is actually replacing breaking news with a new graphic for stories that are just normal stuff. And we have an exclusive look at what that'll be. It's perfect. I think they did a great job. Well done, CNN. All right, that's it for the headlines. But before we go to a break, let's check in on the stock market with our finance expert, Michael Costa, everybody. <laughs> what's going on, Michael? Yeah. More importantly, yeah. Yeah. more yeah. importantly, Michael, what, what's happening in the market today? Well, I am crushing the markets. I mean, <laughs> I, I crush all markets, financial markets, uh, Whole Foods market, where... <laughs> I actually had to get a second job, but um, I have a hot tip I'm going to share it with you. Hot tip, I'm going to share a hot tip with you, so we'll get into the markets. Oh, okay, all right, right. Let's here do we it. go. Yeah, let's actually, do it. actually um, before we do that, that story about the African nations buying the grain. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, it, why do we put this responsibility on them to know where their grain comes from? I mean, we don't even know where our food comes from, you right? know? I've probably enjoyed multiple avocados from the Sinaloa cartel, you know, and I, <laughs> I, I sleep fine at night, but. I would say this to these African nations, don't love this grain too much. This is white people grain and you might develop a gluten intolerance, okay? <laughs> now, look, it's not gonna kill you, but it's gonna make you very annoying, all right? <laughs> Next thing you know, you're gonna be in Tanzania doing yoga with Gwyneth Paltrow while a <laughs> vagina candle is lit in the back. So, all right. <laughs> now, these markets, 
Oh, oh. And Turkey. Turkey changing its name. Yeah, yeah. I love this. Right? I love, you know, I love this. It, it got me thinking. I feel like South Africa should do this. Wait, I, I, I do. Look, part of what's great about being a country in Africa is you get to have this beautiful name, Uganda, Senegal, Namibia, South Africa? I mean, <laughs> what happened with South Africa? You just went off the top of your head, Trevor? I mean... <laughs> You're from not, there. Yeah, but it's not like I named, I didn't name it. <laughs> I'm just, I'm... Are there other people from South Africa? I mean, I, the, Yeah, okay, there's like right, six well, of us. Okay, 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 great, 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 great. Okay, all right, okay, okay, all right, great. Let's get to the market. Let's just do the market. Okay, let's get to the market. Um, so, look, this is volatile. It's almost as volatile as a teenage Michael Costa at a 311 concert. But, look, <laughs> when you step back, Take a look at all of this. What do you see dominating? I see this green line dominating. It's the least volatile of everything here, which is why I advise you, be the green line, right? <laughs> when you have your money, be the green line. Second thing to think about, you see these squares right here. Now, I have spent a lot of time <laughs> analyzing the dimensions, the feel, the size of each square, OK? Now, these squares, they don't mean anything, OK? <laughs> Last thing, you see all this red? Typically, red is bad in finances, but Michael Costa, financial expert, will tell you, when you have red, like a stoplight, stop, wait till it turns green, okay? So, <laughs> in summary, all right? Green lines, no squares, red turns green. Boom. Now, here's my hot tip. This is, okay. My hot tip, Trevor, yeah. okay? Invest in Turkey, boom. Wait, 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 Turkey the food or Turkey the country? Well, that is the million dollar question, okay? <laughs> now, I gotta go, I gotta go to Whole Foods for a shift. Uh, Steve and Produce got COVID, so. I, I don't know why you have. Back to you, Trevor. Why do you need another job? Michael Costa, everybody.